When it comes to water, China is facing multiple challenges. The country is grappling with a severe shortage. But now, one by one, the water supply is cut. How much can we consume? No one. How to secure water safety? Who has a legal process is possible. And it's not only how much you have, but how to use it. In this edition, we travel across China to look at the worsening water shortage and the search for solutions. I'm Han Bin, and this is a Simon Asia. China is not a water-rich country, and water is unevenly distributed across its vast land. Add to that overcapacity and fast development. Even worse, much of its surface and groundwater has been polluted. The government is trying hard to change it, but the effects of China's water woes will continue to be felt for a very long time. Elksa in the west of Inner Mongolia. It's one of the driest places in China. Intense heat, powerful winds, and sand, and yet human settlements. 65-year-old Liu Jinxiang came here as an 18-year-old bride. Since then, she's never walked beyond this patch of grassland. Nine years ago, Liu's husband passed away. Poverty drove her three children to the city, leaving Liu Jinxiang on her own in the place that's been home for nearly half a century. It's a commitment to her husband in taking care of the grassland and the love for the family and the homeland of Elksa. Water is what all creatures in the desert seek. The treasure is scarce and hidden underground. Beyond ensuring survival, to Liu Jinxiang, it's the power to transform the sea of death into the hope of green. This well is the only reason her family stayed. Over the years, the bucket has had to go deeper. Nomads move their herds in search of pasture and water. Over the decades, these have dried up in Inner Mongolia. China is too big. In some places, water is almost non-existent. While in other places, there is an illusion that it's endless. The Banchu Monastery sits on the edge of the Tibetan Plateau. 52-year-old Zhang Yang Lo Zhu takes water from the foot of the mountain every day. For thousands of years, the water has given life to the monks and local herdsmen. But over the past years, Zhang Yang Lo Zhu says he has seen the lakes disappearing and mountain snow melting. Tibetans worship the purity of water. They believe every river, blade of grass, and even stone has its own life and cherish deep feelings for them. The monk hopes the changes to the environment will slow and people can do something to save the ecosystem that once provided so much. What he doesn't know is that changes on the plateau have a huge impact on other changes. The ecosystem governs the weather system and determines the amount of water. The first bucket of water is always used to worship the Buddha, 
Jiang Yang Loju wants more Tibetans to know about the environmental changes in Sanjiang Yuan. He has become a water ranger. He's actively engaged in conservation and campaigning. The family of Wang Chairun has been living by the source for generations. They refuse to be relocated to government-designated communities, mainly because they want to drink the water here. Water is regarded as the family's most valuable treasure. And the Jiang Yang Luoju ceremony of worshipping with the water has made them treasure it even more. More people are taking part in preserving the source at Sanjiang Yuan. Hashi Tashi Dojie has made environmental protection his life's mission. Because Tashi Doje believes the solution is to maintain Sanjiang Yuan's natural status rather than putting economic growth and money first. He says human projects aren't needed to change the ecological conditions here. And the local Tibetans, in fact, form the main body of protection of the water source at China's water tower. 工业文明给我们带来了非常丰富的物质文化，但是现在我们全世界的环境问题就是因为工业化、科技化的过程当中造就的，所以我们最重要的未来的最最大的目标是要建立生态文明，所以这样的源头应该建立青藏性的生态文
它的流动是非常缓慢的。那么很多时候，这个就是它的呃交换是特别慢的。那么自净的难度是极大的。呃，常常呢就是尤其是深层的地下水。那么一旦污染之后，可能几百年，有的说上千年，这个都很难去恢复它。Margin believes curbing pollution is the key to solving China's water crisis, and it begins with finding the source of pollution. He's put a map online, a map of the war against pollution. He hopes it will help mobilize the general public to join the campaign. The areas in red. Indicate how much work needs to be done. Until fairly recently, pollution of China's groundwater had been a state secrecy. According to a government release, more than half of the groundwater across the country does not meet the national safety standards, or is being badly polluted. Many are calling for stricter regulations to halt this trend, and public supervision is also key. Gao Yingang remembers how clean the river was when he was a child, but now it seems to kill everything it touches. The river contains hideous chemicals and heavy metals. He has to carry water from faraway wells to irrigate his crops. He expects a harvest, yet the insidious chain of pollution in soil, crops, and groundwater. Could still be felt for many years to come. Margin believes the barrier to cleaning up China's water pollution is not a lack of technology or money, but a lack of motivation. He wants to make it easy for the public to get involved. His new app, Blue Map. Was created to track and shame polluting companies on a real-time basis. Most of the information comes from the government. The app compiles it in one place and allows users to search quickly. From this PC端开始，那么逐渐的呢，开始推进这些实时的公开，进而把它做到手机上。当大家都能够在手机上看到每个小时这些企业都在违反着排放的标准的时候，那我想。谁没有认真的执法是可以问责的，谁在背后干预了认严格的执法也是可以去问责的。那么最终呢，让我们的环保真正建筑一个法治的轨道上。Back in Alxa, water is a constant concern. Desertification is the biggest obstacle to development. The government is calling for planting trees to restore the grassland and provide a windbreak. But it's often up to individuals to find a way. Liu Jinxiang's idea is to transform this place step by step, meter by meter. Every day, she hauls water to irrigate a special drought-resistant plant, Saxu, which locals call Suo Suo. Liu Jinxiang has planted a small forest with the help of others. Suosuo requires very little water. Though a tree takes years to grow, its roots can hold as much as 10 square meters of sand. Just like these desert plants coping with a harsh landscape, people of Alxa are also coping with the hardships and challenges in nature. In the battle against drought, they're trying to make this place green, for this is home no matter how tough life gets. Liu Jinxiang says she will continue planting Suo Suo as long as she is alive. It's her legacy for her grandchildren.
As the drought intensifies, Liu Jinxiang knows the road ahead is full of thorns. One woman is more in the face of nature, but she is determined to carry on, to bring the color of life to Elsa. Culture Express. See the world in color. When it comes to water, China is facing multiple challenges. The country is grappling with a severe shortage. But now, 一个一个毛细血管要断了。How much can we consume? 没有水。How to secure water safety? 谁没有认真的执法是可以问责的。And it's not only how much you have, but how to use it. 大自然它自己有一套完整一套循环的规律。In this edition, we travel across China to look at the worsening water shortage and the search for solutions. I'm Han Bin. And this is Assignment Asia. It's all about water. A ranger in China's water tower warns creeks are drying up. A herd's woman is using every drop to save her homeland. An environmentalist is campaigning for public motivation. And in Shanghai, whose name means on the sea. An architect is designing solutions to quench the thirst that comes with growing urbanization. For the past decade, Quang Xiaoming has been promoting the sponge city. Our建设人和这个环境啊，更好的保持大自然的状态。海绵城市，我们的目标呢，就是说要让这个建设啊，完之后，最好呢是跟这个地方没有建设之前，它排掉的雨水是一样的，啊，因为我们现在就是城市建
有机的渗透到我们的房前屋后，但事实上它的生态效益也是非常差的。China's thirsty north needs water. Fresh water supplies have been increasingly strained with the declining rainfall, exploding of the population growth and industrial expansion. The government's solution is to buy water from the south. The South to North Water Diversion Project has cost at least 60 billion U.S. dollars for the government. But as China cities become more desperate, the cost isn't the biggest problem. This is the source of the Water Diversion Project. The Danjiangkou Dam is the largest man-made freshwater lake in Asia. The whole dam is some 1,000 square kilometers. The total capacity is over 30 billion cubic meters. This is a natural basin. The whole basin is a natural basin. The natural basin is a natural basin. The whole 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 basin is a natural basin. 一千四百三十二公里，穿伏牛，绕太行，跨江、淮、黄、海，一直到北京。南水北调工程是中国优化水资源调配的核心性工程。南水北调东中西线形成之后，将会形成三横四纵的一种调水格局，实实行我们这个区域内的水资源优化配置。北京市的用水量应该是连年上升的，因为从我们水厂的生产来讲，我们每年的供水量也是在逐年增加，而且我们每年当迎接供水高峰的时候，我们心里所感受的那种压力也是越来越大。北京是一个缺水的城市，这个缺水呢，不光是说咱们能够看到的河湖里面的水，也包括咱们生活饮用水，都是属于紧缺的状态。所以说，整个南水调过来之后，是对北京整个这个水源的一个巨大的一个补充，能够缓解咱们北京缺水的这么一个现状。Senior engineer Guo Qiang from the Beijing Water Treatment Company says, after Southern Water entered Beijing, water volume in the north has gradually increased. Now, half of its company's water comes from the south. It's mixed with Beijing's local water. But he still sees the potential threat of a future shortage. He says the capital city needs alternative solutions for long-term growth. Ah, 调走了这个九十五亿以后，肯定对中下游的一些个生态和用水有一定的影响。下播来讲说，就是看每年是丰收年还是枯收年了。水来的多一些，我们就调的多一些；水来的少一些，就调的少一些。因为他讲的水温系列是多年平均，他有呃丰水系列年，有枯水系列年，这非常正常的，这非常非常正常。But even Fu Jintan admits that the diversion project can only ease water shortage problems in the north for the time being. To completely change the drought situation is unrealistic. 哎，你看这这么清澈的水，对我们当地老百姓来讲也是非常非常重要的。我觉得来讲说，把水调过去以后，希望北方的老百姓来讲说呢，也应该珍惜这个水。首先，首先从节约用水做起，然后的时候呢，再把水资源的利用达到最大化。Water diversion is only a stopgap to solve China's water woes. Authorities are searching for additional fixes. Desalination is one, but the questions remain of cost and price. On the edge of the Bohai Sea is Tianjin's biggest desalination plant. It can process some 200,000 cubic meters of water every day. Company director Li Tao told us the plant is a combination of state-of-the-art Israeli desalination equipment plus China's modern power plants. The power generators are fueled by coal. It takes five kilograms of coal to process a ton of fresh water. The energy costs drive up the water price. This, we, company, this, is still down the line. It costs one to one. This is what does it mean? It means that one ton of energy can produce one to one of this water. 
，这个造税比这这个参数在全世界也是目前时间来说也是最高的。Litao says that the plant is environmentally friendly. The power generators use a closed-cycle seawater cooling system without the exploitation of groundwater. This plant seems to have set a model for other cities. Tianjin's facilities utilize the remaining heat from the power plant with runoff steam to desalinize seawater. Is seen as a greener way, a kind of recycling model that improves power use efficiency. We want to see the control room. At the moment, the plant is not operating at full capacity as demand is weak. We had a taste. It's been promoted as the highest quality drinking water the city has. It surpasses all government safety standards. 呃，海水淡化呢，它有这个南水北这种南水北调这个这种长距离调水，它有一些它独有的这个优势，就是说它不受这个自然这个气候条件所限制，然后它的这个水质它是非常干净也非常稳定，因为它的这个来源其实就是这个海水，然后这个海水它是取之不尽用之不竭的。But Litao acknowledges the plant is not profitable at present. As desalination is too expensive for now, groundwater continues to diminish, and water diversion solves only part of the problem. Many believe the best way to bring relief to the water-stressed cities is to step up conservation, to best the use of what's naturally available. The sponge city idea is seen as a new hope. So, in the future, our water sources, we hope it will be green. 有那个护岸，有绿色的护岸，自然的状态，啊，这个就跟我们大自然里的这个河道啊生成的是一样的。这样的话呢，这个水呢就可以，这个这个透水，可以渗透到地下，啊，补给到周围的这个环境。The new concept may help reclaim a lost way of life, keeping as much water as possible. Huang Xiaoming showed us this test model in Shanghai. The building uses solar energy to raise collected rainwater to form a waterfall. The waterfall can then cool the building during summer. It also creates unique scenery. The aim is to hold the same amount of water if there were no buildings. So we say, what kind of good cities are? The most important part is that we don't leave the nature from the nature. 我们就像我们讲，能看得见山，啊，望得见水，是吧？留得住乡愁。实际上，这个话的意思呢，就是我们能够跟自然去贴贴近，啊，我们不要把大自然的这个东西啊，过度的去破坏。虽然我们要建设城市，我们必然要战胜占一些地方，啊，但是我们在占的时候，是不是能够考虑到跟原来的自然状态尽可能的接近？黄晓明 sees hope for China's future. He's confident sponge cities are part of a wide-ranging solution. Man doesn't live in water the way a fish does, but he needs it just as much. China used to say that man can conquer nature. Now it's paying debts of its past. Moving from half empty to half full means both the government and people need to do much more. The question remains of how we use water and how long we have. And what China is doing decides not only its own future, but the global environment as well. That's all for this edition of Assignment Asia. For more, please check out our website at www.assignment-asia.com. You can also share with us and contribute your story ideas by contacting us on social media. I'm Han Bin, and thanks for watching Assignment Asia.